Okay, so uh, this is the second of three lectures involving uh, Spark streaming um, uh, and using Twitter specifically, uh, the Twitter streaming interface as an example. Um, uh, like last lecture, this lecture uh, crosses uh, between uh, emphasizing principles regarding uh, Spark streaming in general, uh, principles involving Twitter use uh, secondarily, um, and particularly its, its streaming interface, and uh, some principles involving um, or practices involving the, uh, the environment Zeppelin in which we're executing these. Um, today, we're going to be dealing predominantly with some simplifications of uh, the tasks we undertook last time, um, where those uh, simplifications enhance uh, security and uh, ease of uh, using the, uh, uh, the Spark streaming platform within um, Zeppelin. Uh, and uh, uh, secondly, address a very common defect or mistake involving Spark streaming um, and uh, indeed sometimes involving Spark, which is the serialization error. I'll show how those errors can emerge I'll show how they can be fixed in two different ways. Um, as time allows, we may get into some material that will otherwise cover uh, next lecture. Um, this material has to do with uh, a, uh, a generalization of the Spark streaming interface for Twitter that permits uh, filtering geographically, okay? So you can ask for tweets within a certain area. Because last time, the tweets that we were seeing were not specific to, uh, to our area. They were, in fact, from anywhere around the world. And uh, very, frequent, very frequently in, uh, in Twitter streaming, you're interested in tweets that lie within a certain bounding box or that, lie, um, uh, that, lie, or that have certain characteristics, such as certain keywords. So we'll see how we can work towards those today um, in a simple way with keywords and more particularly with regular expressions. But next time we'll see, um, and possibly at the end of this lecture, we'll see a, uh, an interface that allows Twitter to directly support that sort of streaming. Okay, so um, having uh, said those uh, words of introduction, I'm going to switch over now to, uh, to screen sharing. And uh, if someone might be able to check the audio just to confirm that we're, uh, we're good, I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to be uh, starting up um, uh, our interface uh, that we used, um, namely Zeppelin. And so I'd like you to fire up Zeppelin in such a way that it's using, um, uh, using the uh, Spark-based mechanisms we've been talking about. And I'll remind you that the last time we were covering Twitter-based streaming, we had to load in a library, a jar file, that had to be loaded at the very start. In addition, you may recall that we had to go through and set some properties associated with uh, our app use um, in connection which had to do with what's, uh, what's termed the uh, to access token and access token secret, consumer key and consumer secret as assigned by Twitter. We actually went to the Twitter uh, website, the developer side of the Twitter website, and we got these assigned. They were specific to us, but in my case, I somewhat uncomfortably put them into the code, um, the code that was uh, visible within um, uh, within the context of, of Zeppelin. So what I'd like to do this time is to uh, call up uh, a Zeppelin tag. We're gonna go back to this, um, uh, to what we did last time and just rehearse it. And uh, I've excised those particular secret parts of information so that I don't have to cut and in, in awkwardly splice the video or, or, or remove that section of video. So just to remind you, at the very start, we uh, loaded in uh, the Twitter uh, interface. Um, we were uh, doing this through the uh, Spark interpreter. We didn't have to use the, um, the Cassandra interpreter. We could just use the regular Spark, Spark as the default. 
and therefore we use spark.dep. This allowed us to load in this jar, but we had to remember to run it up front, right? Before we started other things. Uh, the second thing we did is we loaded a bunch of, of libraries and uh, for some reason I had, um, uh, I had separated out this one from there. We could put it, uh, put it back there and, and get rid of, of this guy here. Um, so this was a set of libraries related to Spark streaming in general, the critical one being this D stream and uh, the stream in context. Uh, these will support start Spark streaming in general. And then there are some things involving Twitter in particular, the Twitter utils from this library here and Twitter for J, um, which I believe comes to this library as well, but is available separately also. Uh, which allow us to manipulate Twitter specific things. We then set these consumer keys, consumer secrets, access token, access token secrets, and set properties associated with them. We created a streaming context indicating how frequently we want to see streaming in seconds. Uh, we created an actual stream, and then we processed that stream. We queued up actions to be undertaken as the stream delivers content. Um, uh, here we uh, we counted the number of tweets that were coming in at a different time um, from this uh, basic tweet stream. We also filtered the tweet stream for places that um, that that were um, not uh, where the place was indicated, and we um, gave some information about the place as well as the text of the message. The message. Um, the message metadata, as well as contents, are encoded in the status, um, the status uh, uh, element, which is provided as part of TweetStream. It's a Twitter status, and it includes things like how many times it was liked, whether it was a retweet, uh, who the user was that sent it, um, and um, information about uh, about the tweet's contents, as well as things like a geolocation or place associated with the tweet, etc. Now, towards the end of the last section, we um, took that tweet stream, this tweet text stream, which was mapped, which was not only filtered according to requiring um, a, uh, a place, uh, place to be present, but was also mapped to a string. We mapped the status to a string. Oh, that's so useful. Give it to me a second. Uh, hello? Hi, I'm teaching. Do, you, <laughs> do I want to? Um, uh, 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 don't worry about it. Um, uh, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm online and video though, in front of a class, so I can't talk. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's get them. No, no, no. We'll get them. It's through the boot camp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. She asked if I really wanted a bunny hug. Uh, for the uh, for the boot camp. Um, so um, I think Christine had asked my size. Um, so uh, I sure had already did. Um, okay, so we we filter it by uh, by a place. So we're looking for things that include places, and then we convert it over to text. This being a text into which we substitute the um, the text of the tweet and and the place. Okay, um, following that we had. This was a, a stream of, of, of text, okay? It's a D stream of string here. The other one was a D stream of, uh, tweet stream was a D stream of, um, uh, a D stream, a receiver input D stream, a D stream of statuses, Twitter for J status. This is a, a D stream of, of, of strings because we've mapped it to strings. We then took that tweet stream we basically consolidated it into a single partition, a concept which I'll be covering in a future lecture. And then we saved it to a text file, okay? We saved it away to a text file. And what this uh, actually leads to is a folder, interesting tweets, that contains successive files uh, as picked up in five second increments uh, containing the contents of this tweet stream, okay? Um, we also printed it out so that we could see it on the console. Um, and finally, 
um, all of that was kind of queued up promises of things to do once it starts coming in. We then started the, the uh, Spark streaming context and we told it to await termination. And then uh, uh, it, it proceeded to, uh, to sort of print out these tweets, uh, but in a way that did not allow for easy interruption. Okay, um, so that's what we did last time. Now, there were a couple of shortcomings of this that I wanna highlight. Um, and uh, the first shortcoming is we have to explicitly load this in this uh, this jar file. And secondly, we are placing in line here um, this information, which is very sensitive information, which I personally don't like seeing on uh, uh, on online. Um, and I don't like it being forward facing if we're showing people code and so on. So what we're gonna put into place is a mechanism similar to what we did with Spark Cassandra, okay? because we're gonna be continuing to use Twitter and uh, Spark streaming with Twitter as, a, as an interface, um, we're gonna hide this information and we're gonna hide this library load um, behind a facade that we'll, uh, we'll create. So specifically, we're going to create an interpreter that will encode this information, okay? So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go copy this information here uh, into your clipboard. And we're going to go over here to uh, Zeppelin itself. And we are going to go to the, okay, now uh, here it is. It's under, on my thing, it's under anonymous uh, interpreter here. But um, in yours, it may be on a menu on the right called the interpreter, okay? And that will give you access to a set of interpreters. You may remember this. We went through this before. Um, hopefully your screen is more screen real estate than mine here. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is to create a new interpreter. And um, when I look at it on a full screen, there's a button up here. It's just behind there. <laughs> Which, which basically says create new interpreter. Do you see that? Okay, could you press uh, create new interpreter? Okay, I, I, I can't do it here because this, this is overhanging too much. I, I don't know if there's a way I can, ah, here we go, there we go. Okay, there we go, create, okay? Now the interpreter name will be, uh, uh, It'll be Twitter, Spark-Twitter, okay? Now, I'm gonna say too, because I tried this out as midnight approach last night, okay? Um, Spark-Twitter too, but you can call it Spark-Twitter. The interpreter group is going to be Spark. We don't need Cassandra here, so we won't build it on top of that. And once again, the interpreter will be instantiated per node in an isolated per node process, okay? This allows us to run different interpreters in different contexts. We might have a Spark interpreter running on the one hand with Cassandra and one interpreter uh, and one node and, and then um, something for Twitter and another node without them interfering with each other. So if one encounters an error, it won't wedge the other. We won't need any of these things, but what we're going to go down and do now is go down to the bottom of this um, and uh, we're going to, you notice by the way, since we said Spark, it's loaded in all the Spark mechanisms here. We're gonna go down and we're gonna put in a, a in the dependency here, we're going to put in the um, Maven string associated with, um, uh, with that particular uh, library, okay? Okay. Okay, so here we have um, once again, a specification of the organization, something about the library, something about the format of it as a jar, 
and and then the version this is a version of spark with which it's associated 2.11 is the version of scala okay now um what i'm going to do now is to uh further do save here you don't need to do plus you might think you need to do that to add it in but you just do save here okay and as a result uh that should should uh, provide it down here uh, at the uh, at the bottom. Okay. Now, beyond that, what I'd like you to do is to put in and, and to 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 get to this point, you're going to need to edit it. There you go. Edit down at the bottom again. You're going to, but not so far as dependencies. Just this guy here. You're going to be putting a bunch of things in, doing plus to get others listed. And basically, you're going to be specifying a property and a, a value for the property. So to give you uh, the basic idea here, you're going to do this. And you're going to put in, you know, uh, my access token, right? Um, and you don't need the strings around it, okay? So um it, this would be you know like uh uh one f uh two two e uh you know four four nine four four eight whatever right um that long i think it's a hexadecimal string yeah. um maybe a character based string okay next having having added that that gets added when you do the plus uh, further up to the access token. You'll do something similar for each of these guys uh, here, these uh, these later ones. Okay, so you're putting in this, and then you're putting in um, the actual uh, the actual uh, components in terms of the, the uh, values of it. Okay. Okay, I'll let you go ahead and do that. So uh, once you finish those, once you finish the four of those, the name, the value, what you should do is you should do save at the bottom and it should update that, okay? Um, now, it's important you do this before running any code, um, that you define this before running any code. Uh, and it'll be important further that we mark this mechanism we've just added, this interpreter. It'll be important that we we uh, uh, mark that as the default interpreter, okay? So what I'm going to do here, do, do people need more time? A bit more time? No? Okay. Okay. So what I'd like you to do then is to uh, create a note for today, okay? Um, so this will be March, 20th in class session, okay? Remember, you don't need the quotes um, around them, okay? And then do create, you could do create note here, okay? And here we go, there we go. Okay, so before we do anything here though, we need to set the interpreter binding to be the one we just created. Now, I created this, but because I didn't want to paste secrets in whilst I'm on the internet, always a good principle. Um, I, I, I actually didn't fill these in. This is the one that, that I created earlier, which has my secrets, okay? 
so this is spark dash twitter okay um this is the new interpreter that has these four strings in it and that tells it to load the jar file okay so mark that drag it up you it'll probably be way down at the bottom and you'll need to drag it up like here's the um, pig interpreter i'm not quite sure what that is but if i wanted to have that up first you know i could i could drag it up and it may be white at first but you'll want to turn it blue to indicate that it's selected and uh and put it at the top and it should say default okay okay um so uh iman i i um, had gone in and i created a new interpreter and I had set these things to be its uh, the name of its properties and the corresponding values without the quotes. And then I told it to load in the jar file using the Maven string. Are you recording this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, having done that, having set this new interpreter to be our default, we should be cooking with gas and. So what I'd like you to do then is to um, go and put in place the uh, the basic mechanisms for starting uh, our example, okay? Um, now, I'm going to first show you a naive way to approach this, show you a problem that comes from that naive way, and then show you a solution, okay? Now, in the process, there's going to be some text that I'm going to ask you to type that's going to be a little bit tedious. And so I think what I'll do is to, is to send along to you a, um, a copy of what I'm going to be putting in. I want us to run it interactively, but I don't want you to have to spend too much time taping tedious text, okay? Um, the only problem is that um, I can't distribute attachments through Moodle readily. Um, what I could do is post them then. So I think what I'll do is, and I, I should have uh, thought about this earlier, but I will send you the basic mechanism here. There we go. I'm gonna put it on Moodle, okay? Um, so if you go to Moodle, I'll I'll just go post it there, and then you can download it. And then what we'll do is we will execute it, and we will um, uh, will uh, change it um, to fix the problem. Okay, so this will be in code fragments used in class, uh, and uh, here we are. Boom. Okay, this will be the failed synchronization. It should be on there now, okay? Um, and you should be able to uh, to download it. I'll be showing you the code uh, as we're using it here um, on my uh, on my computer, okay? Um, so you can also follow along that way if you'd like to do so. Okay. So here we go. So this is a note. This is a notebook. Okay. Yes. Oh, why do you? Because I'm getting something like this. So. Oh, when you try to. Raw JSON. Oh, yeah. To uh, I think you want to go to Zeppelin's, and there's a thing called import note. Do you see that? Yeah. And you should be able to do import note, and you can even add it from a URL. But I, I think you just want to choose the JSON file on your on your machine and. You cannot. Oh, oh, I know what it is. That's uh, thank you. Now you pointed out a a, a complication. Yeah, you could do that, or I can actually do this. I could do appearance force download. So now, if anyone is having that problem, this is a classic Moodle problem. And and now, if you go refresh your page and you click on it now, it should be able to download directly. Okay. Okay. Um, 
if I had presence of mind, I would share this with Hangouts here. Um, uh, but um, I, I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna. Imp you can import that node and drag it into yours. Okay. That's going to be sort of our basis for today. Okay. And uh, in order to to deal with that, I'm going to clone it. This is going to be um, in class. Um, uh, uh, session. Okay. No. Boom. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure for your interpreter for this note that you choose your Spark Twitter, because I have no idea what it imports as the interpreter. It may do it with my settings. Choose your Spark Twitter, okay? Make sure your Spark Twitter is the default. I don't want it you know, using just regular old Spark. And I don't, it'd be best if it doesn't use my settings because then we might have conflicts and it might say too many, you know, that Osgood guy is going rogue or something. Okay? Okay. So just make sure the interpreter binding is set appropriately. Great. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, um, do you see that? Do you see the elements of it? Okay, so I'd like you to run the first set. And I, I want to highlight the fact that, uh, no, don't run all paragraphs. Okay. Uh, humble. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. How do I, what is it? Yeah. Shift, shift, enter is, is the key. Okay. Here we go. Um, so we're going to be importing these things. And I want, I want to note that I am importing this D stream in particular as well as these aspects of Spark stream and context. Very similar to what we did last time. Twitter utils as well and Twitter for J. Okay. Um, in another paragraph, I'm going to uh, set the log level to be error so that I get error messages. Now, here, in the next one, I have set up what I term a key, it's not a keyword map because what's shown are not words. I call it key phrase map, but the phrases of a very particular sort. Does anyone recognize what these things are? You notice they're not, they're not regular strings. They're not substitution strings. They are in fact raw strings, which can be denoted by putting raw in front or with triple quotes on each side, believe it or not. You can do triple quote to start, triple quote to end. Okay, so this is a map, it's a dictionary, which um, basically indicates these things are part of it. I, it probably would have been a little bit more elegant to just call this a set, um, to just make it a set, that probably would have been the best way to do it. Um, but what are these things here? Do you want to recognize there's some curious characters in them? Backslash W, this little carrot sign. <coughs> These things, those are regular expressions. Okay, those are regular expressions. So here I'm looking for regular expressions which say whooping cough. It could have any number of, of spaces there. Um, Cases where ill is mentioned, but only uh, at the beginning of a of a string, um, and this actually says at the at the end of a string as well. Um, here I'm looking for something which says sick, but does not um, does not have a letter before it, so it wouldn't be like homesick or something like that. Okay, um, and it's not just ill. Uh, within a word, it's it's bordered by things that would delineate a word. Okay, so these are these are strings that are designed to try to pick up common health-related terms. Okay, and this is a uh, a dictionary that can look these up uh, reasonably quickly. Um, again, probably a set would have been better, although I'm not sure how efficient it is for a for a string. Okay, so this is our key phrase map. And, and I'm deliberately doing something here which is gonna cause trouble. We're gonna come back to, okay? I've just created it like that with a map, okay. Next. 
I'm going to create a streaming context uh, to update every five seconds. And I'm going to create a Twitter stream just like we did last time. I'm further going to have um, for this Twitter stream, every time something comes in, it will go count the number of things, number of tweets coming in, and it will report that number of tweets. Okay. Anyone want me to stop? Or are you? Yeah, I don't know why, but I can't load the libraries. Ah, okay. So what's the error message? There's no pointer. Please pointer. I restart your interpreter. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So Winchell suggests when you restart your interpreter so that. Default. Did you save it? Yeah. I saved it. And then. This is awesome. I, I love. Right I love this help. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, go back to the other uh, tab. I used to... <coughs> Scroll down here. There's a save. Do you yeah, click on that save? Yeah. Okay. So one thing that Winchell suggests is if you go to the interpreters and then do reset from there, it actually, he claims it's, it's more, it's, there's a restart interpreter. Okay. Okay. The final thing I would suggest: restart Docker. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. If, if that doesn't work, yeah, I got nothing. I sorry. Yeah. Restarting Docker should restart it from a known baseline state. Right. Um, and. Would you love that? <laughs> I love. It. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm trigger happy and restarting my Docker, and and he. It gives them the willies. Um, uh, okay, there is another possibility, though. So that's those suggestions are predicated on hypothesis that actually your situation is fine. It's just there's some weird thing going on with Zeppelin and the interpreters. There's another possibility, which is conceivably there was something in the settings for Spark Dash Twitter which is throwing it off, like like. Like maybe there's a weird character there or something like that, and and maybe it's um, maybe it's it's throwing it off from um, from from correctly processing it. Okay, um, so I would check just double check those settings don't have something strange in them. Is it working for other people though? Yeah, S same issue. Okay. Docker is your friend. <laughs> if you close Docker and restart it, it's like you the world is fresh again. It's new. You're in the Garden of Eden. It's 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 a new, it's an entirely new world. Okay. Um so I'll 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 try to be um sensitive to to folks here. I'm going to go back to, to our in-class session here. <clears throat> so this, um, how was that going with restarting Docker? Oh, I did it. <laughs> OK. I think I'm just going to use the, the regular old, one, yeah, the, the old, old Spark. spark. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, Bo, is, is everything working okay over there? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Um, okay, so next, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, wanna, I wanna highlight the fact that we're going to be um, doing something different from last time. So what we've been doing for this time has been basically the same as last time with the exception of having this, this background way of loading in, the right settings and jar file, and then having this key phrase map, okay? Um, um, but what I'd like to do now is to um, put in place uh, a mechanism that's going to take this tweet stream and it's actually going to filter out, to, to filter in so we only retain those things that contain these 
elements with that reg, that are matched by regular expressions, at least one regular expression in this key phrase map. Okay, so this key phrase map has some items in it, and if a tweet is matched by even one of these, we want to keep it. Otherwise, we don't. Okay, um, and the logic here is a little bit convoluted, and I think there's a better way to do it actually. Um, uh, as is uh, as often the case, there's um, time was a bit tight. So um, what I what I put in place here was um, I basically got the text of the status. I have no idea why this console. Oh, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just uh, uh, my other interpreters. Yeah, I didn't put like per node. Per node. node. Got it. So they were still running. Yeah. Got it. So now I see everything for loading. Yeah. 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 I would I would note that restarting Docker would would, <laughs> would also have the yeah, same salutary yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah. But I can understand why you don't want to do that. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting rid of this console that out and flush. So what's going on here is that we're gonna take this tweet stream. Is it good now? Yeah. Great. Did that work? <laughs> okay, <laughs> works every time. Yeah. If it doesn't work, the world is is in big trouble. Um, okay, um, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, tweet stream here that we had last time. This is um, uh, this tweet stream. We're going to go through it. We're going to for a given tweet as indicated by status. We're going to extract the sweet the, the the text of that tweet. I had a weird thing with console flush here. Get rid of that. I don't know why that's in there. Then we're returning here a um, uh, a, a tuple. Okay. Um, uh, specifically, we're returning a tuple that is going to depend whose first element is the status. It's just the status of the tweet, okay? And that's, in fact, the thing we're going to, to uh, extract. Um, but then we are going to here write. Um, we, are, we are going to find, uh, we're going to see, okay, is the first one, um, is there something that is matched within this tweet? Did at least one of these things in the key phrase map, when interpreted as a regular expression, that's what the dot R is. If in, in Scala, if you say a string dot R, it just turns that string into regular expression. Here, basically, we try to find whether there's a first match in it, okay? And uh, and if so, we'll, we'll have is defined true. This is going to return an option. Find first returns an option um, uh, of a string. And, and basically, we are filtering by things for whom we do find at least uh, one item here. Okay. And uh, this is, in fact, going to got to be careful here to match this. I wrote this time some co some code some time ago, but it looks like actually this is returning a set. Okay. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, and we're, I think basically we're, we're, we're retaining only those things which match at least one string within the map. That's it. Yeah. Um, uh, so, if, if they match at least one string in the in the one regular expression, one string as interpreted as a regular expression, we will retain them. Okay, and uh, this is for each of those things. It's taking its status. We then extract that status here, which is a d stream of status. So we basically map those to to their status, extracting this guy here, that says p.1 thing. Um, and then for each of those statuses, we are going to map it uh, to, to this, um, where we get the text and we put a separator between it and others. 
and we're going to print that out and we're going to save it to a file. Okay, that's the plan. And and then we'll go start it and and terminate it. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to execute these things. So if you execute this, what you will find is that there's uh, an error here, and you get this very common error. This is one of the most common errors I encounter when using Spark. It's an error that's called task not serializable. Okay, so you'll 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 notice it here, right? Um, and basically, what it's it's doing is it's complaining that it's not able to pick up some of the computation which we're describing that we want to undertake on these D streams. It's not able to package it up in a way that it can be distributed to a large number of machines. In order to, to, to pack it up, it needs to be able to, in the, the technical word is serialize it or marshal it. It needs to be able to put it to, to characterize it neatly in a package that can be shipped to a lot of different machines. One of the ways Spark works is by taking advantage of a large number of machines through distributing packages of work to those machines. Uh, that can include data. It can also include code to be run on that data. Here, it's not able to package it up. That's what that task not serializable means. And again, it is perhaps the most common Spark error that I encounter. It is sometimes vexing, particularly to people who don't know where it's coming from, okay? Um, because you wanna do something and you can't. Let me describe to you where that's coming from and how to fix it. We're gonna see two ways to fix it, okay? Okay, the reason that it's coming in, ladies and gentlemen, well, where is it coming in? If we go and we look, as, as we often do, we'll look in at stack trace. And we'll see, okay, it's within a map. And then there's something about an anonymous function here uh, being mapped. Uh, and it's having trouble turning that to something that could be run on many machines by packaging up. It, it can't effectively package up. Well, where is there associated with this, a map occurring with an anonymous function, well, right, right, right here, okay? It's it's associated with that. Um, and it is having difficulty taking this and distributing it to different cores or different different distributed machines. And that's why it's it's freaking out. Okay, in order to fix this, I'd like to, explain why that comes up. What is it having trouble packaging up? You might think, well, it can't it can't deal effectively with, you know, uh, details of libraries involved or something, nothing that fancy. What it's having trouble packaging up is actually this key phrase regex map, okay? This this the 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 map associated with um, with this guy uh, here. We're, we're using that map, um, we're getting its keys, which are, what are its keys? What are the keys of this? The strings, the strings, which will be interpreted as regular expressions. It's taking those, th those keys and it's filtering them. So it's filtering to find only those keys which match something within the, the string that, um, that were, that's from Twitter. Um, right, and then we're we're filtering it to to only include those that are uh, uh, if they've matched at least one thing. In the meantime, we're using this key phrase map, and it's not able to serialize this key phrase map. Now, you might think, well, why can't it serialize this key phrase map? Maybe it's because it's something too complex for Spark to serialize. Maybe it's something it can't marshal up and send out to machines because it's a map and it's only used to doing it for numbers or strings or whatever. No, that's not the case. Again, it's it you're you're overcomplicating the situation if you're thinking that way. The reason it's not able to do this is because this is entangled with a certain context. So key phrase map here appears 
in the console disconnected from anything else. But secretly, when we're running inside this context, we are entangled with a surrounding context having to do with the Spark streaming and so on. And this is actually taking place in, inside of a class. This, in fact, is a field of a class that's surrounding us, okay? And as you may know, if you want in Java to pass, to pass along information associated with fields inside of a class, one way to do that, the naive way to do that, is to just pass a reference to that class. And that required the whole class to be marshaled. So it's having trouble dealing with this, not because it's a map, not because of something inherent, but because of the, the, the class in which it's located cannot itself be easily serialized and sent, okay? So I'd like to show you a very simple way around this. And this way works very well in many circumstances. So what I'd like you to do is to take that key phrase map here, okay? I'm sure an error like this will occur many times. I'd like you to copy it so it's not there. And I'd like you to stick it down here just before this, okay? Now, by itself, that doesn't help at all. It's just, I'm relocating it for a reason. You can actually get rid of this guy here, this first paragraph, um, uh, because we don't need it anymore. But it's not its location that's gonna be key. What's gonna be key is the next step. What I've done is just a convenience thing. It just consolidates it in one place that I can, cut. this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say here, object, sweet harvester, Okay, now, what I'm gonna do next is key, and it runs counter to my stylistic conventions. I'm gonna put an open bracket here. If you put it in the next line, it will treat this open tweet harvester as being an empty object and interpret the rest separately. You don't want that. So you want this to be here, okay? The important thing is I'm creating this object, and then I'm gonna say def run, I'm going to create an open, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to indent it as befits its dignity. Okay, boom, boom. So, and and I'll come back to the top there so you can see it in just a second. I'm just going to close this. Boom. Oops. Okay, and the final thing I, I'll come back to the top, but I want to put this these two things in there as well. Just put them in after the print, just like that. So what did I do? I went up here and I said, object tweet harvester. And I said, def run. This, what is this? This is a function, right? It's a method. It's a method here. And then I put all this code inside the method. Do you see that? Inside a method, inside an object. Why am I doing that? Well, because to whom does this key phrase map now? now belong. Well, it belongs to this particular object. It's not entangled with a surrounding context of the whole class in which this is located. This object is a self-contained standalone object. Um, and uh, we're going to untangle, therefore, the key phrase map from the, from the surrounding context. Um, we still use some aspects of surrounding context, like this SC. But key phrase map is now a variable that's carved out separately, that's that's isolated from the surrounding class that surrounds all this code. So I'd like you to, to, to just note, this is an object that I've wrapped around this. And I put this stuff in a method because it's code. It needs to belong in some method. Um, and it's the same code, except that the key phrase map is defined right here in the text right here locally, and now I put this SSC start and await termination, okay? Now, we're going to start this. We're gonna run it. And you'll notice it's a happy camper. Has it started running that yet though? No, what do we have to do? We have to call 
tweed harvester run, right? Okay, so here, tweet harvester dot run. Now, be aware, this is going to cause the same issue that that Dorian identified last time. Okay, um, we could do it with two things here. I, I I'm torn about whether to force that convention on upon you. Um, okay, so here we are. It's running. Okay, so. Big picture, what happened here? Big picture, we were stymied by the fact that this code could not previously run because of serialization problem. It couldn't take the key phrase map that was previously located above and pass it out to sets of machines. Couldn't pass it even to different cores on the same machine in Spark because it couldn't serialize it because it was entangled with the surrounding class here in the shell. So what we did is we created an object here and put the key phrase map inside of it. So this was no longer entangled with the surrounded class. That allowed it to be packaged up and passed as part of this map. It could serialize it now. Now it works fine, okay? That's one way to fix it. It's not the only way. What else is happening? Well, we're getting in sets of tweets here, ladies and gentlemen. You'll notice that we we have um, tweets coming in, and you 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 could start to see there's some tweets that are included. Why aren't we seeing more tweets? Why aren't we seeing more tweets here? They don't include the keywords. Remember that we here filter, this was a complex little thing, but fundamentally we filtered the things to include only those that matched at least one of these keywords, okay? Um, we, we had sought here to, to uh, go with this key set and filter out the keys that did not match so we, we only include those keys which match at least one of these. And then if there was at least one, if the size of the resulting number of keywords that matched was greater than zero, we, we uh, retained this, uh, retained this, the, the uh, uh, we were gonna retain the uh, status um, and uh, so the, the tweet. And so this basically, allowed us to deal with tweets that matched at least one of these keywords. And so now, um, here, we are finding tweets which match these keywords. And you could start to see some of them. So if we look for, for example, doctor here, we'll find there's doctors that appear. So here's a doctor at Oxford, apparently, um, uh, although doesn't seem to be acting in their doctor capacity. Here's here's something mentioning <laughs> ill, right? I feel so ill, but I got to drive. Scouts been sick, everyone. Twitter is not always recommended by the Queen's English. Um, <laughs> not even the King's. Um, uh, it's not clear to me why this one was picked out, but um, <laughs> it's also not clear to me whether it's health related. Um, um, uh, okay, so um, so here we are having tweets that seem to match these um, uh, these these keywords, right? Um, and uh, it it seems fairly safe to say that that not all of these are in fact about what we were seeking for here. You know, um, indications that people are talking about a real illness or a visit to a doctor. Here's, you know, someone who's just got that. Um, this is a, a retweet back to someone named Dr. O, et cetera. Just happens to be their name. Okay. Um, uh, the word sick is not always used in a clear health context here, right? But we have gotten tweets that, that map, that match at some levels these key phrases which are encoded with regular expressions. So we're filtering these tweets from around the world. Next time, we're gonna be filtering tweets from this very province or any 
geographic area you can specify with uh, a bounded box in latitude and longitude, okay? Um, it so happens that our province is maybe the only jurisdiction in the world that you can specify precisely as a bounding box. <laughs> I don't know if there's any other. Does anyone know? Is there any other place in the world you could specify as like bounded by latitude and longitude neatly? Anyway, um, makes good for good Twitter examples. Okay, so ladies and uh, gentlemen, that was one way to deal with this. Now, it's not the only way. I wanna show you another way, if I may, okay? You don't have to enter this, but it is an alternative. Once again, the key step will be to untangle the key phrase map from a surrounding class. And I'd like to show you how you do that. Here we go. And um, uh, this was an object-based strategy, and we're going to do, go here. So this strategy is going to be um, a little bit different, but what it makes use of is no object. It just makes use of a, um, of a function, okay? And particularly, um, I, and I will send you this as well. I'll post it, okay? I'll go post it here on Moodle so you can um, browse it at your pleasure. Um, here we go. It's called uh, Simplest, okay? Um, here we go. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we do basically the same set of tasks up to a certain point. But instead of defining an object, we're going to define a, um, a method, okay? This method is going to tax your knowledge of Scala. Remembering back to the opening sessions, you'll see something kind of strange. Well, it may seem to your eyes strange here. What, what are these two things here? What is this meaning? Oh, what is this meaning? What is this doing? Why are the two argument lists? It's currying. This is curried, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the only way to curry, but it's it's a convenient way to curry, and it's a tasty way to curry. Um, so this this uh, takes uh, a staged um, sort of set of arguments. First, a key phrase map and a tweet stream, and it returns a D stream of string. And here we've packaged up some of the functionality. Uh, we've patched uh, packaged up this functionality where we filter. Um, to only include things that are in this uh, key phrase map. And basically we extract the, uh, uh, the strings and we convert them over to text. And we return a D stream of text. The key thing here is that this is referring to tweet stream, but is this tweet stream, oh, sorry, it's referring to, we can get rid of this again. It's not serving any useful purpose. Oops, oh, oh. boom. Um, it refers to key phrase map, but whence does key phrase map come? Where does this come from? Yeah, it's from the argument. It's not, and I repeat because it's key, it's not from this itself. Instead, so we're not referring directly to something which is a field in a surrounding class. What we're referring instead to is, is something which is 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 passed to it here okay so all we do is we define that little thing that packages up this bit of functionality we can then define our key phrase map and here we can go through these set of steps and we call this function this is the, the method we just saw we give it this key phrase map and we give it the tweet stream. Here we specify them together. Often we might specify them separately. Key phrase map first and state and sort of stage computation and later tweet stream. But ladies and gentlemen, tweet stream here is something which is um, is being passed in to the same function. But the key thing is key phrase map is being passed in. Because it's being passed in, as an argument here and then used as an argument, this is no longer, sorry, the key phrase map here reference is no longer entangled with the surrounding 
class. And it's only referring to this guy here. So that's fine. There's no problem with serialization and this can execute just fine, okay? So this is another way to do it. Untangle it by taking the thing that's causing the tangling and pass it instead to as a function of an argument that will separate it out and allow the code to just refer to the function of the argument instead of to this field in a class, the key phrase map, okay? Okay, so those are two ways to get beyond the notorious cannot synchronize error, cannot serialize, excuse me, not synchronize, serialize error, okay? Two ways to get beyond this entangling of things in the shell here with the surrounding implicit context, the surrounding context of, the, of a class. Okay, this is all of that, um, but I want to take us now to our next topic, okay? And to do this, um, so any question about this? Question about that? Okay. So I'm going to take us to our next topic. And to do this, um, it'll be helpful if we rehearse um, a task, okay? So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to call up a shell, okay? Um, and... Uh, I'm going to connect via SSH to uh, a machine, which I don't think you folks are likely to have connected to before, but which will be key for next lecture. And I want to make sure you folks can log into it because we're going to be living on it next lecture. Okay? It's cmpt898.usas.ca. Okay? CMPT 898.ustas.ci. This minus X just allows the X systems to talk to each other. So if I call up an X window, it'll show. So I didn't SSH over to this. Okay. Um, please let me know if you cannot log in there because we need you to be able to log in. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you just a couple features of that setup and where we're going next time, okay? So cmpt898.ustas.ca and see if you can SSH over, okay? Meanwhile, I am going to open up something which is, uh, we're, we're going to be, uh, you're getting denied? Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> or not have their NSID as host name as your machine name, you should use your NSID app. Oh, th thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Quite right. So I can do that as well, but just to show people. So it's like this, uh, NDO885 at this. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll, well, yeah, in my case, it didn't ask for them, but in your case, it will, right? Um, so it's specifically when you do this, if, if I did something like, you know, it, it's, uh, okay, I hope it doesn't script, then it's gonna ask for my password, right? Here it knows my password because I've set up the, the requisite keys and so on. Okay. So are you able to log in now? Okay. Um, now, um, once we're on that machine, um, we can look, uh, Local, uh, if you go to user local spark dash spark dash 2.2.1 bin. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to CD over to that. Okay. I'm going to CD over there. So there it is. User local spark 2.2.1 bin. Da -da -da. And what you should see is a spark setup. This is a more recent version of Spark. What we're working with with Zeppelin is 2.1.0. This is Spark 2.2.1. And as you might expect through my earlier narration of Spark, as a speed of evolution, there's actually a significant difference between 2.1 and 2.2 in certain regards, okay? 2.3, I think, is, is, is even um, uh, out there or about to be released. Um, uh, to mention that. Um, OK, 
Okay, now, if, if you look here, because we haven't used Spark on the command line, I just want to give you a few pointers. There's a conf folder, okay? Um, if you go into conf, there's a thing that's called here um, spark-defaults.conf. And if you cat that, or less it, what you'll find here is that it's referring to the same library that we saw. So, so I cd'd into conf, and then I catted spark-defaults. And what you'll see is that in the Spark jars that it's loading in, there's the Cassandra connector, and there's also Apache Bahir for 2.2, okay? This is a different library than we've been loading. We've been loading Apache Bahir, um, and I could go back, but it's uh, Apache Bahir 2.1, I believe it was. Um, this was uh, here. 2.1. Here we're, we've got 2.2. Okay. Now, because of that, when we run Spark here, we're going to be able to run it uh, uh, with some additional features that we don't have in Zeppelin. And hence, next time's class is going to be spent over here predominantly. Okay. If you, if you CD out of the conf directory, I'd like you to run bin spark dash shell. Okay, bin Spark shell. And this will actually call up the Spark shell. I just want to make sure it runs for you folks because next time we're going to be depending on it. And if it doesn't, we're in bad shape. Okay. Um, uh, the tech staff, tell me, what's that? Spark dash shell. Spark shell. Bin, it's in bin. <laughs> okay. Now, if you go look at this, you'll find it loading in. Uh, a bunch of different things, including Twitter for J here and all that sort of good stuff that we'll be uh, using. I've worked with the tech staff to uh, to make sure this is set up. And somewhere in here will additionally be Apache Bahir. Here it is, Apache Bahir. Okay, so it's loading that in when it first starts. Um, so this is Spark version 2.2.1. Okay, now. Let's quit out of this right now. I just wanted to be sure it runs for you. But I'd like to, to flip down. That's horrible. Okay. Sorry, my secrets are out. Okay. Um, okay, well, um, we, we don't have to depend on that. This is where we're going. Um, we're going to be able to take a defined... Um, uh, a defined specification of a bounding box here and create a filter query, okay, which is going to be applied as a filter in a stream context. So you see there's this create filtered stream. This would be quite different from what we've been doing. What we've been doing is looking at tweets, including this, this current time, we were looking at tweets. I'll, I'll go down to it. Um, uh, we were looking at tweets, ladies and gentlemen, that match these keywords. But the stream to which we were, we were, we were sort of trying to find those tweets that match these keywords was the special stream. Special because it is the kind of default Spark sample stream. When I say sample, it's about a 1% sample of all tweets out there in the world, okay? 1% to 2% of all tweets that come out. And so we were trying to, amongst those 1% or 2% of tweets, find tweets that are health related, um, find tweets that match these keywords. But we're missing a huge number of tweets, like 98% of the tweets out there. Why? Because Twitter doesn't offer those for, for Twitter streaming for that stream. It, it realizes that if it had a, a, a fire hose that high, the bandwidth requirements, amongst other things, would be too high. So it doesn't send out 98 or 99% of its tweets in this default pipeline. And as a result, 
we were looking for health-related things in a pretty geographically generic, anywhere in the world, but pretty sparse area. We, we weren't finding tweets related to our area. And for Saskatchewan, 98, 99% of tweets would be omitted. And that's not what we want. That's not what we want. If we started to filter further that stream we were just dealing with, if we had started to filter that by location as well, we'd get extremely few for Saskatchewan. There'd be very few of them because it's already a 1% or 2% sample of all tweets, roughly representative, Twitter says. So that's not a very good strategy. Now, there's two routes to addressing that. One of them is about is what I'm about to show you. I'll be talking about a later one and probably on Tuesday, okay? So this route to dealing with that is we create a filtered stream. We don't depend on this 1% or 2% sample that's generic geographically. Instead, we tell Twitter, hey, we want tweets from a certain region of the um, of, of, ge of geography, please give them to us by that region, okay? And this will allow it to give us a much larger sample than 1% or 2% tweets for Saskatchewan. As long as we're staying within their bandwidth requirements that among other things force that 1% or 2% for the geographically generic stream, as long as we stay within that for our bounding box, we can get an awful lot of tweets that are specific to Saskatchewan. We might get 80% of tweets for, that are known to be from Saskatchewan. We might get 50%. We might get 100%. Um, as long as we stay within the requisite um, uh, uh, bandwidth uh, requirements, so the sort of number of, of tweets we're getting, et cetera, we may get a much better sampling of tweets for the province. Could we have gotten many of those tweets with this other strategy? We could have gotten some of them, maybe about 1% of them or, 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 or you know, 5% um, of them or something with this generic stream, but, but um, probably about 1% or 2% actually um, by looking for tweets from Saskatchewan, that generic stream. But here we're using what's called the filtering interface, the filter interface to Twitter streaming. And this is new to Spark 2.2, to Apache Bahir for Spark 2.2. And that's why we're having to go over to this guy here for Spark 2.2.1 to apply this filtered stream interface, okay? So we, we specify a filter, a filter query, which as you might surmise, doesn't only filter by we're not restricted to specifying geography. We could request filtering by other things. And it will give us a hose, a pipe, a conduit specific for that filter that satisfies that filter. In this case, it'll be geography. The geography, ladies and gentlemen, of nothing more than our, nothing less than our fair province. Okay. So we are here getting tweets that will lie within this sort of a custom tweet stream already, and then we can uh, filter it by some uh, by some other attributes, okay? So we're gonna be using this next time. And some of you may recognize the same strategy we used this time as one of the strategies to avoid the serialization problem. We do this object thing and, and uh, avoid it getting entangled. So that's what we're doing next time. And we'll see how this filtered interface can be used for more things than geography, but where geography is a particular, particularly valuable thing. Um, final note, um, the, um, the filter that we're specifying here, this filter query um, can be found on, so if we do Twitter, Twitter for J, and you actually look at its library, you'll find that there's um, quite uh, quite a number of classes, and uh, one of them relates to a um, uh, a query. This allows us to query Twitter, and uh, Twitter for J um, uh, can also define a filter query, 
um, where this is used for the uh, the filtering interface. Okay, so um, uh, here we're going to uh, be tapping once again uh, Twitter for J's mechanisms uh, in order to uh, to engage in this type of streaming behavior. So that's for next time. Thank you very much. And unfortunately today, because of a commitment to one of our funders and partners, um, I'm not gonna be able to hold office hours right after this. Um, uh, I will be holding them again on Thursday. Um, and if anyone has special needs that you need to talk to me before Thursday, let me know and, and we'll make arrangements. But I have to go over and, uh, and join our, our partners right now, as does Iman. So thanks very much.